In the previous video, I covered the process of setting up a webhook server. In today's tutorial, I'll guide you through the steps to establish a secure webhook connection with TradingView, ensuring the protection of your personal information. It's crucial to secure your API server as well. While the initial setup involved an HTTP link, which may be acceptable initially, it is advisable to transition to HTTPS for enhanced security. Before we proceed with configuring the webhook on an HTTPS-based API server, I'll provide a brief overview of some essential security basics. HTTPS uses SSL, TLS handshake to establish a secure connection. SSL, Secure Socket Layer is an older protocol. Now TLS, Transport Layer Security is widely adopted and enhanced with lots of algorithms, which is the successor of SSL. But both share the same initial handshake process and common tools. Not going deeper into their differences here. In the SSL, TLS handshake, the client initiates the process with a client hello, expressing its intent to establish a secure connection, and the server responds with a server hello, selecting cryptographic parameters. The server then sends its digital certificate, signed by a trusted certificate authority, containing its public key. The client and server securely exchange key information to establish a shared secret for encryption. The finished messages confirm the handshake's completion. Certificate validation involves the client verifying the server's certificate signature using the CA's public key, checking certificate details, and establishing trust. This process ensures a secure, encrypted communication channel. I know it might look very cryptic with this explanation, but the example following will help you better if it's not clear. Let me recap the unsecured server setup from my previous video for a smoother flow. I was using Nginx as the web server. Let's quickly delve into the configuration used. It was listening on port 80, which is the default, and forwarding the request to the backend server, which is listening on port 8080. If you noticed, it's HTTP. Now, let's examine the backend server code. Here, I am simply implementing a straightforward GET version call and configuring the server to run on port 8080. It's that simple. Here, I am just ensuring Nginx is running. Yes, it is. Now, all is set. Let's initiate the API call from the web browser. Here you go. We received the API response. If you notice the warning from the browser, it says, not secure. Now, you know why we want to switch to using HTTPS. This section talks about opening the firewall if any on your cloud machine. Since I am using Linode for my cloud hosting, I am just showing that as an example here. All we have to do is open the port 443, which is the default secure port for HTTPS similar to port 80 for HTTP. I also have opened port 8443, which I will be using for my backend server. This is really not required, but for any debugging purpose in case Nginx is having issue, I can check accessing the port 8443 directly to my backend server. Securing your connection with HTTPS with the help of OpenSSL. The setup is going to look something like this when we are done with the configuration. Mostly we need to secure the connection between TradingView and the entry point to the backend Linux machine which is the Nginx, and the connection from Nginx to the backend server can be either HTTP or HTTPS. But, for a few reasons I would suggest using HTTPS for the backend server too. 1. Already mentioned for debugging purposes, if you are accessing port 8443 directly from external, then you are exposing the details. Second, if you want to terminate the SSL to the backend and use the Nginx as a reverse proxy, then you can perform that operation too. I will leave it here with that summary and proceed with the setup. We need to first install OpenSSL on the Linux machine if you don't have them already. Here I have installed them and it's running version 3.0.2. There are three steps involved in creating the certificate and the key. First, we need to create the private key with this command. We are using a 2K cert size. Second, use the private key and generate the CSR. Typically we should use a trusted CA, and we'll show them soon. Hang on to that thought for a while. But, here I am going to use the self-signed certificate. Where, you are acting as CA, Certificate Authority, too. This contains the public key also. Provide all the information and you will get the CSR done.
The third and the final step is to generate the digital certificate, which embeds the information in the public key all in one. You will have to copy the certificate and private key to the SSL cert path. Now you have your own self-signed certificate generated and this can be used to establish a secure connection. Let's see how to configure the Nginx and backend server using this digital certificate. Let's open the Nginx config and change the listening port from 80 to 443 and specify it with the SSL option. Then, point to the certificate and private key path. Change the HTTP connection to the backend server with HTTPS also along with the port number 8443, which is the port where the server will be listening to. Save and restart the Nginx. In the backend server, we are going to modify a few things. Here, I am having the copy of the cert and key in the home directory also. Since, accessing the etc folder might require sudo access, but the server will be running in non-sudo mode. Now, run the bottle app with port 8443. Server is gunicorn. This can be installed in the pip environment with pip install gunicorn. Then, pass the cert and the key as parameters. Save and run the server. Here you can notice that the server is running on HTTPS and also on port 8443. Let's fire the same API from the browser. Now you notice, the browser is showing some different messages instead of showing the response as is. This is because, now the server is sending the certificate and the client is trying to make sure if the certificate is valid and is signed by a trusted CA. As I had mentioned earlier, if we really need to not show this untrusted warning in the browser, we will need to go with trusted CA for generating our certs. But we used self-signed certs. But, it's okay, the browser has an option to continue after reviewing the details. You can click on the not secure button and it will provide you with all the details of the cert, which you can review and continue. Once accepted, you will see the response and the browser now remembers this cert. How do we get the trusted CA? There are multiple of them and you can quickly Google and get the list of all trusted CA authorities. You can go with one of them and generate your certs, if you really want to make sure if your application is an external client facing, and you don't want your client to get worried about these untrusted certs. Obviously there are fees involved in it, but for our application, this is not required, since we are going to do the reverse, where, we are going to validate the client certificate which is sent from the trading view to our backend server. Let's see how to proceed with that next. Let's open the Nginx config again, and this time we will set some config to validate the client cert. First, we need to tell the Nginx that we will need to validate the client. There are three options for this setting. On, off, and optional no CA. The off can be used if you don't want to validate the cert in Nginx, and you want to validation in your backend server. The other two are needed, if you want to do validations at the backend, and also parse some of the subject information at Nginx and do some basic validations. The way to pass to the backend server is through HTTP header. Here, I am asking Nginx to pass the client SDN which contains all the information we want. Hang on, I will show them in action soon. Finally setting up some logs for debugging. Save and restart the Nginx. Let's quickly check the logs if the Nginx started successfully. Yes, we could see that it started. Now, let's quickly write a post API since our TradingView webhook sends a POST API with all the information we need. Save and run the server. Now we have all the necessary configurations done, let's open the TradingView and configure an alert. If you already have an alert configured, then you can modify now to switch over to HTTPS. Here, I am changing the endpoint to alert, which was the newly created one on the server. I am having the threshold of BTC set to 40,000 an alert when the value is above, we want to receive an alert every minute to test it out first. We received an alert already and could see the message from the API server. Let's see the logs from Nginx, which will have the actual information which we are looking for. We can see that the log contains the SDN details which we added to the logs in Nginx configuration. This information will match exactly with what's specified in the TradingView help page for webhook authentication. But, one thing to note here. There is an error saying the client verification failed and the reason is the certificate has expired. But, how did it even work now? I purposefully did not explain this configuration earlier. This configuration is a temporary workaround, 
since TradingView was sending a certificate which expired but I want to proceed with my application. And, the only way is to catch this 495 error and redirect again to call the backend API server. But remember, this is only a temporary workaround and should not be there permanently if you see such issues. Please contact the cert provider. I have already opened a support case with TradingView and getting it fixed. If you want to pass the cert to the backend server and validate there, you can pass the whole cert via the HTTP header. Let's also add them in the SSL log. Save and restart the Nginx. Let's wait for an alert to come. Ok, here we have the alert message and got our full certificate dumped in the log. This is logged in hex format, you will need to convert them to non-hex and copy them to any of the decoders online. Here, you can see that the certificate expired in August 2023. That's the reason for Nginx to fail the client validation. Hope TradingView will fix the issue quickly and I can remove the temporary check. Hope this setup for HTTPS for Webhook was helpful and you were able to understand them. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel if you like to watch similar videos and help my channel. Thank you, see you in another video.